Good evening and welcome to JJC Talks. JJC Talks is a production of the Joshua Johnson Council of the Baltimore Museum of Art. JJC is an affiliate group of the museum made up of members who share a passion for African American and African art. We are named after the 18th century African American portrait painter who lived and worked in Baltimore and other parts of Maryland. And JJC is one of the oldest African American art museum support groups in the United States. Our mission is to forge meaningful connections between Baltimore's African American communities and the museum. We promote and highlight the achievements of African American artists with programming, with internships, with an artist residency based at MICA, and sometimes with purchases of art for the museum, which we support. We're glad you're here tonight and we give you a warm welcome. Welcome if you're on Facebook, welcome if you're on YouTube, we're glad you're here. Tonight, we invite you to participate by putting your comments in YouTube or on Facebook where you are, and you will get invitations as well from our guests tonight to provide your reflections or to put your comments in. There will be a Q&A session at the end. Sit back and enjoy. Our host and moderator tonight is Antoinette Peel, who is the immediate past president of the Joshua Johnson Council. Good evening, Antoinette. And um, good, evening. good evening. And our amazing guests tonight are the twins, Hope and Faith. Hope and Faith McCorkle were born in DC, just down the road, and they were raised in Hyattsville, Maryland. They both have BFAs from New York University in studio art. They were formally enrolled in the Visual and Performing Arts program at the Jim Henson School of Arts, Media and Communication. And they've been cooking, curating, studying and creating art since they were seven years old. At 17, unfortunately, they lost their mother to a rare lung disease and since then have used their art as a space of healing creating and engaging with identity, grief, loss, and coming together to form an interdisciplinary collaborative. Sourcing their subjects from their own lives, they began to see their worlds collide and they have come into their own using 2D, 3D, and 4D elements as the puzzle pieces to form a bigger picture. Their work serves as a spiritual as well as an artistic process. As they work, we're going to, as they talk tonight, we're going to learn about their work and their individual practices as well as their collaboration. They are currently artists in residence at the Creative Alliance in Baltimore. It is my pleasure to welcome you, Hope and Faith. Greetings, greetings everyone. Thank, thank you, Jean, for the introduction. Yes, thank you all for being here tonight. We really appreciate it and appreciate this opportunity to share our practice and our story with you all. Yes. All right. So we will be talking about our journey, our artistic journey, our mental health journey, and basically what has brought us here to Baltimore and what we're going to continue to do as artists in the community. So here's our origin story. And as we talk about our story, we open the comments up for you all to reflect on how your story has brought you where you are today. So a little bit about us, the background, um, more than what Jean has introduced. Um, we were born in DC and we lived about uh, 20, 15 to 20 minutes away in a little area called Hyattsville, Maryland. Um, which is part of PG County. Um, our mom was also from DC, born and raised with <laughs> uh, ties in South Carolina and North Carolina. So we have a little bit of that in between. And our father is Jamaican, so we're Jamaican, <laughs> um, which has influenced a lot of 
the things that we do now in terms of community and cooking and art. Our mother was diagnosed with this rare lung condition called sarcoidosis, and she was diagnosed with it in 1995. When she was carrying us in 99, it was a very risky pregnancy because this condition um, created a, a scar tissue on her lung, which in, inhabited, inhibited <laughs> her ability to, to breathe properly. So carrying us was really risky and um, we were very just grateful for life because we all made it out. Um, but unfortunately, as after she had us, her health began to decline. So she's a really big driving force in our life. And when we turned seven, we moved into this little apartment complex um, on the same street we were um, really born on. Well, well we raised. Just, yeah. raised. <laughs> and um, when we turned seven, we were told that like we had to learn how to cook yeah. because we had to start assuming some of the roles in our house so that we can help our mom out and also just grow to be young women. Yeah. A lot of responsibilities. It was a lot about like um, growing up at an early age, um, but it was also a learning experience because it prepared us to who we are today. And one of those things were cooking. So our mom was a chef and she was able to instill that power within us. We would cook for birthdays and we would cook for holidays, Christmas, which was her birthday. Um, every Everything that you can, think of like a family gathering for, we would be the ones in the kitchen preparing the meals. Yeah, she had us catering for our <laughs> entire family. Yeah. This is like over 20 people in our little apartment. And this very much influences where we are today. Right. It was also our first form of collaboration. So Faith would be doing like the sides, like mashed potatoes or rice. And the baked mac and cheese. Yeah. <laughs> It's my specialty. And I would do like uh, the meats and we were both kind of collab on like desserts and stuff too. All under direction and mentorship of our mom though. We can't, we couldn't have done anything without her. Like it was all like, I'm going to tell you how to do this. So you got to do it right because people are coming and they're going to eat your food. And then they're going to basically, you know, tell you about yourself if you did it wrong. <laughs> yeah. The, um, picture in the bottom right is a photo of our uh, room in this apartment complex and this is when we started really getting into our creative visual arts practice as a form of arts because you know first we started with cooking and then it started branching into visual arts and this was also like our introduction into curating right <laughs> so our our bedroom was like where we could display our work and things we were working on things we were inspired by yeah. <laughs> so planting those seeds into our current practice, um, after losing our mom at 17, it really brought us to a point of like grieving and, and needing community and healing and family and art. <laughs> um, so this slide is representing the visual performing arts program that we were a part of in high school literally from 13 to 17, right before we went to undergrad. We were its inaugural year at um, Northwestern High School. So it was not only our first year in high school, but it was the first year of this program being officially started. And our mentors on the far left, uh, Jimmy Richmond Edwards and Larry Cook really instilled uh, black excellence in us from a very young age. And they worked with us for all of our duration in high school. Yeah, 10 years now, because we're still in touch with them. And um, they were also professors at Howard University at the time. So we were like 13, 14 year olds learning like college stuff. Intensive. <laughs> yeah, practices. Um, and those of you in Baltimore who've uh, been to the BMA's recent exhibition, Legacies of a Great Migration, them two were um, featured artists in the show and programming. So really proud to see them, like the people that we looked up to, the people who taught us to be in these museums and like kind of paving that way for our future. Yeah. Yes, um, in the middle and right photo is just a little uh, show about where we were in this program. We found community in these young artists 
that also or, or rising and just really just working through our emotions through art and some of them we still keep in touch with today um and the far right is an article that was written about us when we were um, in high school when we received over a million dollars in scholarships um, to go to college. And we were really grateful to be a part of this program because it really was like our success story and, and it was our introduction into not only higher education, but like higher uh, sense of awareness and self-awareness because we were very much still grieving the loss of our mom who passed our senior year of high school, but with our community and our arts program and our mentors and who continue to push us, yeah. our family, <laughs> we made it out. And now we're testaments to healing by example. So with our scholarships, we chose the one school that we both got into that also gave us a uh, full rides, and that was New York University. That way we could stay together, stay not too far from home, but also be outside of Maryland because we needed to experience something a little bit different. <laughs> um, here at NYU, we were able to kind of express our individual disciplines. I personally got into painting more and ceramics. It was a lot of the the touching and feeling aspect and um, me studying psychology also as my minor made me want to do art therapy and get into just learning more about the mind and how art can heal um and i was interested in this is faith by the way i don't think we <laughs> <that's Yeah. why. laughs> i was into uh printmaking mixed media collage um i got really heavy into digital art and is that all I did a lot of things. We did a lot of things. We did a lot of things. But um, our practices pretty much were complementary, being as though Hope was the painter and I was more into drawing and making. And through our individual practices, we were able to figure out that we have had similar themes working individually. Um, so what you see here on the left is Hope's piece, Wendy, which I made during my questionable freshman year or beginning of sophomore year of it's a <laughs> yeah. um, It was when I was getting back into ceramics and um, um, our first, I want to say first couple of critiques in first years of college was a lot. Heavy art integrating like grief integrating like losing our mom integrating that healing process that we really had to go through as teenagers and as young adults without you know a mother in the world um so i created this piece to reflect this tattoo that us and our older brother had gotten um in honor of our mom covered in like her favorite color and along with this necklace that we both I mean, it's probably under your shirt, yeah. <laughs> that we both have with her thumbprint on it, just to commemorate that um, that life loss, but also like trying to find it back. So these were themes that I was thinking about in a lot of my work in school, and I realized that like, wait, my sister doing the same thing, but we were doing it right separately, yeah. And she named the piece Wendy because our mother's middle name was Wendell and our grandmother would always call her Wendy, loudmouth Wendy. <laughs> um, and my piece on the far right, which is called Wendy too, it was completely unrelated. Like we did not make these in relation to each other. We were actually going through our own like trauma and, and grief and healing separately and during our undergrad. So when I made this piece, I was thinking about a similar theme, which was our mother and her favorite color turquoise and how she wanted to be her ashes to be um, spreaded over a waterfall. So all of these themes of, of grief and also of commemorating this loss and really honoring a, a, a lost loved one, an ancestor was permeating through our work, but it was a shared experience that we had, but we had different perspectives on it. Yeah. And that's literally like the, basis of us now is like kind of like recalling memories but having to piece it together by like having i have a detail that she has a different detail that we're like oh wait that did happen um which is a weird thing because people 
think that twins kind of share brain or like right. share, which we do sometimes, or they we share like mannerisms and stuff, but we're completely different people with two different personalities and our memories are scattered. But, yes. but when we link up and we create these um, productions, this is when we kind of are able to remember this experience and then create in yes. that sense. Yeah. So the photo in the middle, is from our exhibition titled Our Skin, Our Logo. It was our first collaborative exhibition together in November 2019. So we had the opportunity of um, sending a proposal in when we were in our junior year of undergrad. So it was our first time like writing proposals, first time in installing in a space, first time like curating, curating like figuring out where things are gonna go, printing things, we did all the vinyl. It was an experience, it was tough because we were also in school, like having to go to class and stuff. But um, it, it was definitely like a pivotal part in our lives because we were able to form this collaboration of hope and faith. <laughs> Why you look like me like that? Because you look like me. Oh, and so in the gallery space, we put the movable walls in a way that created a cross in the room, and it divided the the gallery into four rooms. We called them. One was honoring four sisters, which was uh, facets of black hair and ritual and sisterhood, and then uh, another one was four minds, which looked at our mental health. Um, the one, this one was for our angel, angel above, above, which honored our mom. And this piece, Wendy on the left, was in that room. And then in the fourth room was for our souls, which talked about our food and family and, family and spirituality. So all of these tenets that we had broken up in this first exhibition that we curated together soon become one. one. <laughs> Like you and me. That was good. Yeah, oh, thank you. <laughs> so this is our piece, um, EBT of food stamps, which is um, basically a recreation of the food stamps card that we grew up with. Um, as we were cooking all the time since seven, it was all, you know, on food stamps, on government uh, funds, which was literally like a blessing for us because our mom wasn't able to work and we were too young to do that as well. Um, so this piece was the first that we collaborated with together. Um, Faith like did the vinyl, cause I don't know how to do vinyl finals at all <laughs> <laughs> to make it look all seamless and clean. And I, I'm the painter of course, so I painted like the blending in the background and whatnot. Um, so yeah, this piece was definitely like that first testament of hope and faith and like expressing like the past and present um, we changed the numbers on the card to relate to the address we lived at with our mom and our names, Faith's Hope, and uh, the year and month we lost our mom. Yeah, it was our first collaborative piece together. <laughs> yes. And um, also in the, during our undergrad, um, we began to branch out and build our practice in performance and film and uh, sound. So our film Homecoming, which we recommend you all watch on, it's our, website. on our website under films. Homecoming is a short auto fiction film and auto fiction meaning it has a fictitious element um, embedded and for hours it was leaving voicemails for our, our late mother and we reconnected with our family. Um, our cousin came down from Baltimore. We reunited with our dad. Uh, we uh, called up our brother who was somewhere else at the time yeah. <laughs> to, to send over his, his voicemail. It was um, definitely a collage in different aspects, a, a way of storytelling in a completely different form that we were used to. And we went through our old storage units to find these photos and big photos of us that we were so like disconnected from for years. Because after our mom passed, it was just straight to college. And right. then we were just existing in the world. And healing. And healing. Mm -hmm. uh, but once we did this film, we were really just piecing these scattered puzzle pieces together. together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We recommend you guys watch it. It's only five minutes. <laughs> 
So also during our senior year of undergrad, which was circa 2021, circa, um, we also collaborated and decided to basically construct the practice that we were having now. Um, this is Sadie's home, our first sub-constructed scroll. We create on these scrolls to tell stories and allude to like the story is never over as scrolls back in ancient times that are always like kind of unraveling or like as long as the wall. Um, and Sadie's home was that piece, that first piece, the like the anchor of showing like the black mother and honoring her and her multidimensionality and the fact that she can multitask. She's, mm -hmm. There's the food on the stove and the babies in the back on the wall. Like the cornbread is in the oven. She's <laughs> washing the greens. She's on the phone. She's cutting onions. There's, this piece really spoke to what we saw growing up. And it not only spoke to a testament of like what black life and, and joy and, and ritual is, but also there's healing embedded in here because the food we ate healed and brought our community and our family together. And um, there's also a photo of us and our mom that was placed on the fridge. And yeah, yeah. so we were blessed to receive um, a DC Commission on Arts and Humanities Art Bank grant in which they acquired her. And Sadie's home is now living at the MLK Junior Memorial Library in DC. Yes, in her hometown. Yeah, and everyone can view her, um, of course, during library open hours. But yeah, it's it's a it was definitely a milestone for us because it was something that we want our work to be able to speak to, is be able to like live on in experiences like being in a library or a museum, and for people to be able to resonate with it too. So, Twin magic. So here we are now. <laughs> is with our um, our current themes is transformation and expansion. So completing undergrad, we kind of chilled at our hometown for a little bit, and then we were called to Baltimore, in which we migrated here at the end of 2021. And we've been loving it ever since. Thank you guys for being so welcoming to <laughs> us. Um, we originally moved to West Baltimore. It was it was really, it was tough because you know we weren't uh, familiar with the areas in Baltimore and we weren't familiar with like where the art scene was. So we kind of spent our first few months um, recollecting ourselves because moving is tough and um, just building our on the beginning of our practice, like building our website and finding opportunities and stuff like that. Yes. And while we were in Baltimore, we did a lot of healing yeah. and eating. Um, <laughs> this photo in the bottom here represents our uh, many Thanksgivings that we've had here because our aunt has been here for years. And she was another reason why we came to Baltimore is to really reinvigorate that relationship with her and um, eat yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and um, share space together. And that's something like, you know, that's very important to us. So being as though we're back here, we can do that with um, our mother, sister, someone who was, was very close to her and just really ask her about questions of the past and, and just speak with her about her life and whatnot. And, and it influences our practice very much. And in this photo in the, in the right-hand side is us and some of our kitties at Lakeland Elementary and we love teaching and educating. So we brought all of what we learned from everywhere in the world <laughs> to here to Baltimore and to teach the youth because we believe that it starts young and we work and move as if we will be the role models that they look up to so that they have creative expression through art and can really feel confident in going into creative careers or even just understanding how to express themselves. And healing through art. Oh, on to watch your step, our love child. Hello, love child, our, <laughs> our most recent love child, because there's a few of those. Um, watch your step was an exhibition that we had just recently closed, literally last month, Christ. <laughs> um, the themes of the exhibition were about honoring ancestors and looking at our lineage 
um, learning about these uh, traditions, things that have been passed on, like food and healing, and spirituality, and um, community. Yes. So we were fortunate enough to receive an MSAC grant, Hope and I wrote, and we really put in the time and effort and energy into really bring everything we want to do to this one um, experience, which was um, hosting virtual discussion on mental health, Black mental health, um, hosting intergenerational healing through art workshop, um, hosting an artist talk, and also doing a opening reception that had people from the community as well as artists from Baltimore involved. And performers. And performers. And our closing reception that had food and games yeah. and <laughs> community and music. Yeah. So Watch Your Step is basically our first solo exhibition here in Baltimore. Um, you know, we've had the Ice Cream logo in New York, and we had a solo show back home in our hometown in Hyattsville. So this is our first time, like, breaking out into the Baltimore scene, and the reception was was more than anticipated. Um, and we wanted to be able to integrate all of those themes of what we've learned from the past, so the food, bringing it to the community, hosting workshops, um, producing our artwork, and telling our story. Oh, did I skip? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> so, watch your step. We forgot to put the location. It oh. was it was it was at School Thirty Three Art Center, uh, which was it's a two floor gallery. So the first floor scene is on the left, and the second floor scene is on the right. Um, we collaborated um, on a mural on the second floor, which is the second photo with uh, two of our very lovely sisters that we met here in Baltimore, Lovey and Soul, um, to be able to create a meditation space, um, a space to be able to reflect and kind of just think and be apart from the themes in the show. And um, people were like doing yoga or just sitting and yeah. <laughs> um, one of the pieces in the show, this is Solo Return at Driscoll Park, um, again with the themes of celebrating and community. We used to have our birthdays at um, this park that was called Magruder Park, is now called Driscoll Park after David C. Driscoll in um, Heights of Maryland. And this park is where like our mom would throw down this is this we had birthdays until like what five or so five or six, six five yeah. or six here. Um, my mom would throw down. There was there's food. There was big cake, and um, this piece was commemorating not only her life but our life and the lives that we've had going there every year to celebrate not only ourselves but each other and, and family and bringing everyone from everywhere to this one center. So that's what we do now. Yeah. Our our practice is very reflective on the past and bringing in those memories and um, figuring out how that influences our present and what we're taking with that for our future. Ah. Oh my gosh, I love her so much. <laughs> this is um, my grandma's garden. Um, she was our centerpiece in our exhibition, Watch Your Step. Uh, this scroll was basically a testament honoring the Black mother as well as um, just the lineage of our family. Um, towards the right of the piece, there's an obituary of our grandmother who was basically the, the forefront of the matriarchs in our family. Um, she had a garden in South in Northeast, Northeast DC, L-shaped garden where she would grow like fresh tomatoes and fresh okra, peppers, and collard greens and all types of herbs and stuff. And all of that, would feed her 11 kids as well as the community. It was like, it's, it's like, how do I explain that? It, 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 <laughs> it, it's what we want for ourselves and our future, but it was, it was just like amazing to hear these stories because it's like, you did all of that with like everything that you grown from your hands, all these seeds that you planted, you know, um, to be able to give it back to the community and your and nourish, you know, your yeah, your children too. And so she taught her kids how to cook, who taught us how to cook. <laughs> so the figure in black and white is our mother, 
And the figure in the front is our aunt, our Aunt Linda, who is here in Baltimore. And she is our oracle. She tells us all these stories of the past and we honor her and love her very much. And through her and building a relationship with her, we, we connect with our mom, we connect with our grandma, and we also connect with our community because all of these elements that they were raised with service, with food and healing and all of these things that they were raised with is very much instilled in us and that we bring out and through our practice and telling these stories. Right. So we cook a lot of collard greens now. <laughs> the recipe is in my head, but <laughs> it's passed down from them and I wouldn't be able to do without them. <laughs> do you wanna, oh, so yeah, speaking of collard greens, <laughs> um, uh, collard greens show up very frequently in our work. I don't know if we've ever done one a piece without it. Without it. <laughs> um, and with that, we have this interact had this interactive piece as a part of Watch Your Step, which was a collard leaf. I have one here. Um, and the community was able to, people who came to the opening, who came to um, our private tours or any of the workshops, they would write messages on the collard leaves and we planted them in a little cute planter, um, planting seeds. And then at the closing, we handed them back out to the community and people were able to walk away with a positive message from someone else. Yes. And this is um, a video recap of that closing celebration. <laughs> So that video was by Najee Randolph, an amazing photographer and videographer. You can find her on our website as well as every recap of Watch Your Step to relive the experience because we've been reliving it ever since it was over. <laughs> it was a really great introduction to what we want to do here in Baltimore and to be able to basically express ourselves in our story and really grateful for the grant from Maryland State Arts Council to be able to produce that. Grateful for all the help that we've had along the way and um, grateful for all the people we have on our journey now. Yes. So if you wish to follow our journey, our links are here. And um, our reflection question is, how does your story inform where you are today? Thinking about these themes of honoring your ancestors, of your birth story, your origin story, where you come from, your background. There's so many things that influence who you are today. So please keep that with you, take it home, sit on it, whatever you gotta do to think about how your story informs your place in the world. Yes, yes. and as Jean mentioned, we are Artists of Residence at Creative Alliance, which is a nonprofit event venue. There's a bunch of performances, um, our exhibitions and the residents live upstairs. So feel free to do a studio visit with us. We would enjoy that. We love company, we love talking. And um, if you scan the QR code, you can follow us with everything that we have coming up next. Yes, we have a lot coming up next, including solo solo shows. Yes. 
So stay <laughs> tuned. You'll see a just a faith and just a hope. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us tonight. Thank you so much. That was a great presentation. And we really got to know you. I do have some questions, though. I did um, want to ask you about the cooking. Can't wait to taste some. Yes. <laughs> some, food. some food. So I, um, you had quite a spread in the very early shot. So, And it seemed like food was done and then the work is created. Do you ever, how does the food now show up in your work? Or is it still separate? Do you follow my the, question? You're cooking yeah. and you're creating, but does it ever come together is where I'm, at, where I'm going with that. I would say yes. Um, two things. One, we like to put food in our pieces. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's just showing how much we love not only eating, but being able to cook food and to share it as well. Um, and I would say for the second one, Watch Your Step was the first time we were able to create that experience where you're in the gallery setting and with our art and the themes and the exhibition and able to eat and be of community with the music and the vibes as well. And it was our food, like we cooked for um, the Watch Your Step clo closing celebration. So everything was was by hope and faith and just being able to yeah. ingest and digest the hope and faith. And the collard greens actually went first. So yeah, that's, <laughs> we're happy about that. Yeah. I thought when you said you had a collard green leaf that you actually were going to have a actual leaf somewhere attached to something. Do you ever use food as part of an installation, actual produce or leafy greens or something soon we we were <laughs> bridging into that our, our last uh solo exhibition at the public playhouse we had a basket of lemons but they were not real lemons yeah so we're, we're bridging into that because we we're also thinking about archival and, and conservation yeah. and conservation yeah. something to think about but yes thank yeah. you for not, yet. not yet not yet not yet <laughs> <laughs> we gotta figure it out Okay, okay. So I do want to also touch on your, you mentioned um, mental health. And we know that that's been a big topic for people of all ages, and how art and art can work in the healing space and address some mental health concerns, as well as relieve or, or at least ease some of the mental health or the mental heaviness that people may be experiencing today. Where does that or how do you leverage that experience through, I guess, your psychology <laughs> um, training? and the work that you do. I know you mentioned it, but if you could go a little bit deeper into the connection between how it shows up or your experience in dealing with it as an artist and artists, perhaps artists you've met. Um, a lot of that for our collective practice, it's through our colors. We choose a vibrant color palette to be able to kind of bring a brighter, more spirited, um, aesthetic, I guess I could say, for our pieces. And it, if you compare that work to our previous work, which is slightly a bit darker and it was a bit more heavy and a bit more representat representative of our mental state at the time, it was still expressive of like that grief that we were going through and we continue to go through, but it's just um, a message of feeling a little bit lighter now with these colors and these themes um, and being able to portray the people, the community, our our mother and our spirit within the artwork. Yes, and I, I've also have had experience taking art therapy classes um, at an institution, a hospital. And it was then where I really did understand that not only the work that I was doing and I was in college at the time, not the work that I was doing in college was like something healing for me, but like this could be healing for other people because I was going through mental challenges at the time. And um, I gave my piece to Hope yeah. <laughs> when, I, when I returned home. And she really, she, it, it really brightened her, um, yeah. her space. And professionally, Hope is um, a, psycholo a psychology student and also has worked with me National Suicide Prevention, Prevention Lifeline. Lifeline. Yeah. Yes. National Prevention. Yeah. But, um, and we it try to integrate that within our workshops as well. So, for example, for the 
intergenerational healing through art workshop that we had for Watch Your Step, we invited families to be able to kind of honor a, a loved one, whether they were lost or here. And um, with what we had, they were like talking about this person and talking about their favorite colors and expressing things that they would say and just the joy of being able to remember this, create this for them is healing in itself. Yeah. And with the students, with the youth, we always check in every day. It doesn't matter if you see them every other day. Every day you check in with them before you start. You know, some one person may be down, their heads might be down. One person might be just very energetic running around. And it's just up to us as educators and artists to really uh, be flexible with that energy and, and curating and also tending to each, each student as they we meet them where they are. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> So talk about the title, Watch Your Step. I mean, you've said it's called Watch Your Step. You mentioned about it being connected to ancestors and where people could go. Tell us what gave you the idea to call it Watch Your Step. I have ideas, but I want to hear from you. So, oh, do you want to? You will. Okay. So um, Watch Your Step is about, it's a warning. It's a message. It is about thinking about, it's about consciously thinking about the next steps you are taking in your life and also looking at those who came before you, the steps that, you know, you now feel. You yeah. To that. And the themes were around, like, honoring the past, um, looking at the traditions that you use in the present and what you're doing and, like, how are you using that for your future? So it's like, watch your step, watch what you're doing, watch what you're saying, watch how you're acting. Um, but also, like, a part of life is being able to reflect and to be able to be like, my mom taught me this, you know, and that's a part of watching your step because it's like, I didn't get here for no reason, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't just poof, you know, I just poof, I'm just, I'm a whole person. <laughs> yeah. So it's called watch your step to be like, just to be like that reminder. It's it's in all caps to, um, yeah, to be that reminder. I, I was hoping because I don't often hear a lot of young artists really connecting and plugging in to the legacy of who they are. And that, that ancestral, that lineage, that heritage and intergenerational connection that you have in your work is really significant for where we are now. And as a culture, being able to preserve that, that which we've evolved or devolved in some cases to. Right. And so it's really allowing uh, through your practice to hold on to those things that you have really learn from and grown into based on your your history and your ancestors and that's significant it's very significant it's not forgotten and i'm glad that you're an example of how important and how influential your history is and your parents have been for your career and that's something that i will i wish more and more artists young artists would really hold on to so that things that have been developed really that the shoulders are standing on aren't lost that is right. hanging in the air that people Absolutely. actually paved the way. And so I thank you for paying homage to your family as a, re as a reflection of our community as a whole. There is one question here that I wanna ask, and that is, does it feel like a risk or a growth pursuit art to pursue art individually? Ooh, is it, is it, could you repeat that? Does it feel like a risk? Does it feel like a risk or a growth or growth to, a, to pursue art individually? Individually, oh, that was the part. That's the subject. Of so it. for me, I it's I have to grapple with it. It's a, it's very it's a very mental spiritual thing because a lot of our things are connected. Our, our lives, our experiences, um, are creating. And then like right after this, you know, this big huge exhibition, like now we're doing our own solo exhibitions, and like my brain is like. How do I do this? What do I? What do I make? <laughs> Who am I? Who am I? So, so like for me, for me, it started out as a risk, which is like, oh my god, like can I, can I do it? Can I, can I pull it off? Um, but it's all, but it, it, that's part of the growth, like breaking out of that mindset itself. Yeah. It's a way to pave my own way. It's a way to reframe my brain into being a whole person. And be and fully expressing myself because I have things that I haven't expressed yet that aren't shared experiences. Right. So and those don't just go away. They're not just ignored. <laughs> the pursuit of hope and faith. So it's a it's a risk, 
but I'm going to do it and grow through it because you yeah. have to grow through what you go through. So, yeah. yeah. And <laughs> I also think it was necessary for us to come together because um, during our time at NYU, we were doing so many things individually mm -hmm. and um, we weren't really, we were healing individually, but it was, it's something that had to happen collectively too, because as twins losing our mother, it's something that we both had to go through and it wasn't just like, I was going through it by myself, right. as, as well as our brother too. So every time we were all able to be in the same room, it felt like, like the light was there, like our mom was there and I think that's why we work so we, we work well <laughs> together besides the the twin bigger banter thing but um, i love to do this because it, it it heals our inner child and it heals that you know that i don't want to say it's a hole because not a hole in your heart but just like that um depression because we needed each other at the time and we didn't have each other at the time, but now that we're both in a better mind space, that we have to do this part together in order for us to grow individually too. Because sometimes you have to come together in order to be able to, to uplift each other. Yeah. And we do maintain individual things. Faith is a, a curator. Faith is a fellow. I am doing a lot of other things. Like we do teaching. I, I perform. So we're, we're maintaining. <laughs> individual activities and our practice is is coming into that light very shortly this year <laughs> okay okay, okay. okay. <laughs> i want to just go just a little bit more with that question in your show because i know you said you have different mediums that you play in or that yeah. you work in so when you were putting this together were there certain pieces that you worked on together and certain pieces you worked on separately or was all of it a, a whole collaboration and then somebody decided where things go. So, um, our Hope and Faith's primary practice is done collectively. Um, so any piece you see that says Hope and Faith on it, we have both had our hands on it in a certain way. It, even though I might be skilled in print making and drawing, I may have done a paint on it. And even <laughs> though she's the painter, uh, she might have Draw a little something. I do draw a little you something. do a little draw a little something. Um, but there are two pieces in the exhibition that were done completely separately, and they were our self portraits. In our, they were our self portraits. Okay. It's just, yeah. So this is all very. It, all everything is intentional that we do. We did that sep separately for a reason because not only did they like anchor the my grandma's garden, the centerpiece, but they were. Also, the oh, yeah, that's my grandma's. Not only did they sit on opposite sides of my grandma's garden, but they were our ourselves. Like this is me, and this is her, and we were. This is our branch into this next thing. The story is always continued when with us. So this, well, all of this was a huge exhibition, and it ended at the beginning of this year. Now these self portraits are going to have their own lives. Okay. So yes, <laughs> and um. Yeah, we, we, we put them together in a specific fashion because of, here, let me go back to this picture, because of the story being told, this one, yeah, the picture on the left. Uh, it starts with Soul of Return at Jusco Park, which honors our uh, birthdays from birth to six, five yes. or six. <laughs> um, and then it, it goes down to the self-portraits and then the grandma's in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then this last piece on the end is really called, it's called End Game, and it's on the end. And um, our, all of our scrolls have a top and a bottom or a left and a right, but End Game does not have a bottom because it is quite literally the end of the story. And it is a piece that honors our brother's story and what he is manifesting for his life. Right. And um, his son and his wife, and we honored that through Watch Your Step because we are, the we're storytellers and we're all, we were um, reflecting on thinking about what people would want to leave for their future. Can I hold the mic? Selves, generations, kids. <laughs> <laughs> but to answer your question, yes, the show has two pieces that we created individually, which were those of us um, being the people carrying the torch, honoring the legacy and protecting that family lineage. Yes. The she also asked about how they were placed. Mm -hmm. So I 
what I was thinking. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask, and I know we're getting close to our time, but I do want to ask when you are looking at something. So if you're going to, we're going to look at grandma's garden, somebody decided that this is what was going to be in the image. And then somehow um, there's a, there's a collaboration on the choice of materials to use and where to place them. So how does that work in the brains of both of you or individually? Some says, I'm, someone says, I'm going to draw this and then say, how about we put the jeans on? Then how about we put the leaf here? Yes. How does work for you? That's a great question. So we tried to divvy up. We're like, Faith is going to do this and Hope is going to do that. It never works. And it, never, it doesn't work. Um, oftentimes, we, so we, we come up with, we want to do a piece about grandma. That was the whole thing about it. And then when we, when we created this piece, we actually went to the, the house that um, our grandma had in D.C., with our with our aunt, and then we were looking at the video. We were like, "Wait, she needs to be in the piece." <laughs> and then it just kind of kept flowing kept, from there. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we decided on who did what. Um, I I love to paint uh, portraits, so I'm usually the one to do that. I did that for Sadie's home as well. And we were like, "Wait, should we have her mom in the piece?" <laughs> it just kind of just kept growing. <laughs> and um, because she wasn't anywhere in the exhibition um, until I actually had this Reiki session. And our Reiki, my Reiki healer was like, your mom, like, where is she? And then we were like, oh, she's not actually in the show. And we're talking about honoring ancestors, you know. Um, and then we came to the idea that she should draw a mom because I was painting an auntie. And then the rest kind of flew from there. I usually do the backgrounds of our pieces, the blending and stuff. A lot of the paperwork is... Bay. She does a lot of the printmaking and the cutting and snipping. And then once we have all the pieces together, we just kind of meet up and <laughs> we're like minions. <laughs> a puzzle piece. Yeah, we like do the puzzle together. Okay. okay. Yeah. So we have a couple of questions and we'll kind of round out our session here. So this one is you had um, lovely praise for your art mentors. What art inspires you now? Oh, um, still our mentors very much. Wait, um, that's not the question. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, what art inspires me now? What art inspires me now? I'm very much inspired by music now. Music has been moving me very like. So we we go to a lot of uh, Baltimore events out here at Soul Pepper Ketchup. Um, the Baltimore scene hosts some at the Black Mall. Um, who else? Weirdo Wednesday. Weirdo Wednesday. A lot of places where people are performing or DJing, and music really does inspire me to move and release, um, like stuck energy that I have inside of me. Because sometimes visual art gets my brain working too much. I'm like, oh, how did they make that? Or like, oh, <laughs> we do how long did it take to make that thing? We're like, that thing's huge. <laughs> um, so music really just takes me out of the the visual um, zone and helps me break down some of those feelings. Mm -hmm. that feeling um and i'm i'm getting into it as well um, music production and carrying out this story through another way of storytelling what about you it's all music is it all music or a specific genre of music oh, um i really like moody music i like atmospheric, <laughs> yeah, I, like, I like atmospheric beats instrumental yes. tools okay there's this uh person called the sun drop garden i love her work okay uh, yeah, it's it's all very like um, experimental music. Um, yeah, nature sounds all on like a bass line. Things that make like move me, tell a story, and like keep me in the in the a world. <laughs> the world is, is absolutely right. Yeah, um, I'm inspired by the art of our mentors, like Faith said. Um, it's it's truly just like in awe of being able to see their their growth from. We knew them when we were really teenagers to now, um, and to see that it's it's possible, you know, for, and to see black artists just thrive in this space and in Baltimore specifically too. Um, I'm also influenced by music. Um, I like reading my sister's writings. And oh, nice. nice, nice. Honestly, I I also get inspired by my past artwork. I'm also inspired by our, our friends. Our friends are really cool people. Yeah. Our friends out here in Baltimore and, and beyond. Okay. We love y'all. <laughs> we know who you are. 
<laughs> so this will be our final question. It's how does the resi residency expand your influences? Ooh, good one. Well, Joey Davis, the visual arts director, is really great at being able to connect us with opportunities and um, also just providing opportunities as well. Like, for example, our solo exhibitions will be in the ARG em Emily Rothschild Gallery here in Creative Alliance. Um, it has definitely gave us the space for more visibility and to be able to create more too, mm -hmm. being able to live and work in the same space. And like, we don't have to like have an apartment and a studio too, mm -hmm. you know, like it's all in one. Um, and we're in an arts environment. So there's eight of us down the hall. We hang out, like we get inspired by each other. We do potlucks. We see each other's we, like, works. Knock on each other's doors and like check in and give each other soup. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> with that, with that helps us like downloads and be able to kind of reground ourselves too because it's like it's not it's not chaotic. Yeah, it's not. And that helps us influence others because it's like I have the space to be able to host this workshop or to have an open studio or studio visit, um, or to prepare this proposal to have an exhibition and to get opportunities from from joy to be able to apply for and shoot our shot you know yeah. because that's a part of the practice is being able to yeah you know be able to apply and to be able to reground yourself within your art and sleep i yes. think pre-reliance has definitely helped us be able to get aligned with yes. what we're doing and who we are and providing that space to do so. When we when we came in, we actually came in into one studio, which was, <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So uh, joy was very. It, being at Creative Lights is such a blessing because once we both got in, they allowed me to move into my own studio, and now they treat us as separate artists, but also as a whole, which is very, very important to our individuality and our collective practice. And now we both have the space to grow and feel and breathe as twins, <laughs> separately and together. Yeah. Yeah. But that's very nice. That's very nice. And I know if we could put back up the last slide, which has your contact information on it, because we want to make sure that our audience does have access to you. And how does your story inform where you are today? It's still opportunity to respond to that. And I will say it coming from parents from the South, everything they've ever told me about behavior and doing the right thing and serving and treating others the way you want to be treated is definitely something that carries me through. And so Absolutely. With that, uh, I think we all have a story that informs where we are today and we'll continue to do that. And so I cannot thank you enough for answering the call to participate as one of the JJC Talks artists and artists in residence down at Creative Alliance. And now you're part of the JJC Talks artist family. And so we appreciate you for that. So I would ask anyone who is in the Creative Alliance area to swing on by and see you and reach out and make an appointment. I'm on the calendar yes. to get into that studio and hopefully it's the day you're cooking because I like to eat too. <laughs> <laughs> see the work that you guys, the great work that you guys do and will continue to do as you continue to navigate the streets of Baltimore City and all the wonderful artists that are here because we know it's a very deep, rooted arts community in almost every possible genre there is and yeah. so this we're not short on where you can explore and experiment your creative genes yeah. so i thank you so much on behalf of the jjc the bma for you taking the time to share your story with us this evening and again hope and faith thank you so much check them out you will not be disappointed and they are who they are that you met today when you see <laughs> them in person so be ready, or should we say be hungry too? Yes. yes. I want to taste some of those collard greens. <laughs> Got you. All right. Well, thank you all very much for joining us this evening, and we wish you all a safe and wonderful good night. Thank, thank you. you. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.